Hey guys, welcome back. This is Rich. In this episode, we want to introduce you to a new concept called the surface interval. And we'd love your feedback on it. And this is, this is the, uh, to address times when you really can't go diving and do filming on the island. And one of the big motivation factors in the last few weeks for us is the fact that we have had more rain in the last three weeks than maybe we've had in the last couple of years. It has just been pouring. We've had flooding and whatnot. It also affects the reefs on what you've been able to film. You know, Adrena and I have been out on the second reef and we've wanted to film a couple of very large nurse sharks on the second reef and we didn't bring our camera with us because the visibility was poor. That said, I'm sure all of you when you come to the island are going to experience similar situations due to weather or maybe you're just tired of doing five dives a day and you want to do something different. Well, what I want to tell you about in this episode is a very secret place very few people know about on the island. We just don't talk about it very much. It is, it is a place called Fontaine. And it's this hidden oasis up in the middle of the island that is got giant almond trees 30 feet high. They need a lot of water. They have ancient pools that people of Bonaire used to go swim in. As far back as 1928 or earlier, I don't even know when the, the pools were actually built. This place sits in the middle of the island and uh, the, it, it's possible to have these conditions by this spring that comes out of the, out of the island. It's the only real big freshwater spring on the island and it comes out of that island like a gusher. It's, it's pouring out, it fills these pools, it waters these um, beautiful 30 foot uh, almond trees. In fact, many of the people of Bonaire basically don't even recall Fontaine or if they do, they have faint memories of this when they were a child. You know, also in this area is there's sugar cane growing, um, there's talk that an alligator used to live in the pools over there. Uh, there used to be a, a snake in there at one time. Uh, they're not there anymore. Uh, and so to have this kind of special place, I mean, this place is green, 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 and uh, is, is incredible. And it has vistas. Uh, if you climb up into, up into the cliffs that you can see the whole east side of the island. The problem is it's been closed off by, by private ownership. But we're going to take you there. And I've been saving this footage from another project I had been doing a few years ago, and uh, I think you'll be surprised. So we want to take you to a place you haven't seen before. I'm almost positive you haven't seen it. And uh, it's something very special and unique about the island of Bonaire. So let's go see it. This is the story of two divers who left the corporate world and moved to Bonaire to live a diver's life by the sea. Many only dream about this life. Our hope is to inspire you through our experiences and stories so that you can live the dream too. This is a diver's life. The water and sky, reflection in my eye, and it's true. So true that my life, that my life is a she shy. In the cliff tops above Fontaine, hanging over a large rock, we see Bonaire's east coast in the distance. A little below, a constant stream of fresh water comes out of the mountains to feed the oasis and was a source of water for the Cacuatillo Indians that first settled Bonaire. In 1681, the English pirate William Dampier refers to a spring on the west end of the island in his journal a new voyage around the world. This spring is known to be Fontaine. He writes in his journal during his visit to Bonaire. The houses are about a half a mile within land, right in the road. There is a governor lives here, a deputy to the governor of Curaçao, and seven to eight soldiers, with five or six families of Indians. 
There is no fort, and the soldiers in peaceable times have little to do but eat and sleep, for they never watch but in time of war. The Indians are husbandmen, and plant maize and guinea corn and some yams and potatoes, but their chiefest business is about cattle, for this island is plentifully stocked with goats, and they send great quantities every year in salt to Curacao. There are some horses and bulls and cows, but I never saw any sheep, though I have been all over the island. The south side is plain lowland, and there are several sorts of trees, but none very large. There is a small spring of water by the houses, which serves the inhabitants, though it is brackish. At the west end of the island, there is a good spring of fresh water, and three or four Indian families live there, but no water nor houses at any other place. On the south side, near the east end, is a good salt pond where the Dutch sloops come for salt. This 17th century anchor at Orange Pan is at a depth of 43 meters. This 1794 map from the Madrid Naval Archive is the oldest known map of Bonaire. This 1866 map shows Fontaine. This more detailed 1915 map shows a well on the Fontaine property. This image shows how the spring at Fontaine is formed. Rainwater permeates through the porous limestone and hits the impermeable volcanic layer at the center of the island. This then forms underground runoff that finds its way out to Fontaine as clean, fresh water. Central to Fontaine notoriety are its swimming pools, as this picture of the local people swimming there is from the 1980s. I have not found out when and who made them. At some point, the water coming out of the mountain was redirected using an ingenious aqueduct system that feeds swimming pools that were opened to the people of Bonaire by landowners. These aqueducts are seen as the canals just at the top of each pool. By placing a small sandbag or rocks at one section, the water can be redirected to another pool to be filled. It is not clear when they were constructed, but it was before 1928. This 1928 picture shows a young and now famous L.D. Gerhardt. Gerhardt brought electricity to the island in the early 1930s, persuaded KLM to fly to Bonaire in 1936, built the first professional supermarket and bakery, was involved in the foundation of Washington Slagby National Park, and the protection of our beautiful flamingos. In the Second World War, he provided food and water to prisoners in the intern camp and their guards, and much more. He was also a leader in the government. In short, an instrument for change for the betterment of the Bonaire people and our nature. These rolled paintings that lined the walls surrounding the pool and the 1930 entrance to Fontaine. In 1955, Prince Bernard and Queen Juliana made a royal visit to Bonaire and a barbecue was held in their honor at Fontaine. These are pictures from that event. The question you may now ask is, what is Fontaine like today and why do the people of Bonaire not have access to it? Let's go visit Fontaine. Many of you who come to Bonaire pass by Fontaine without even knowing it is there. Like many, you are told about the Indian inscriptions at Boca and Nima, and you leave Krylandike on the northern road to Rincon. The first amazing sight that hits you is Arawak, and the land sailing site. This draws your eyes to the sea, and you start to look for the signs for Boca and Nima. Yet, on your left-hand side is a little sign that says Fontaine, which is part of the old Columbia plantation. In a blink of the eye, it disappears from sight. Some noticed the little sign and decided to brave the dirt road only to come to a lock gate and turn away. In 2020, as part of the Five Monuments effort, the Fontaine caretaker Bucci Franz allowed us to access it. Bucci was turning 90. Our hope was to see how we could help in the restoration efforts underway. Doreen and I followed the road to the lock gate. Simone Swears, part of a small group of volunteers restoring Fontaine, let us in. Immediately, you find yourself in an oasis in the heart of Bonaire. Everything is green. An almond tree? Yeah. Wow. And there are lots of uh, 
Not Loras. Loras stay Loras like that. Oh, in the evening. Yeah. Hundreds. Michael Pemmett, friend and highly experienced closed circuit <laughs> rebreather diver, joins us. This is a Quihi. A, a what tree? Quihi. Quihim? Quihi. Yeah, the. Quihi. Inju. Inju? Quihi. Okay. It's very common, actually, but this one is big. That's a. Wow. Michael explores a lot of the long, island when he's not diving. Bean like fruits. Bean like fruits? Okay. There's a tree like this next door to me in the property next door, but I'm obviously not this big. <laughs> Everything's big here because of the water. And that's from the dripping? That's where it goes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's we climb the stairs to the ancient swimming pools and step back in time. Wow. How deep is this? A meter. A meter? Okay. Now that's the water. If the water is also constantly flowing where we came in. Yeah. We planted some food for the goats and stuff. Yeah. And they're being watered all the time. Okay. There you are, baby. Hey. Did you fall in? <laughs> no. <laughs> you climb down. Clean this out, but it's completely. Uh, it's leaking, it's not working. Oh, it's, yeah. So, it's how do you get the. You just run the water in from these other places? Yeah, or? That's the well. That's the well over here? Okay. But, um, oh, yeah, you can see the water running down. That's cool. It says they have like little aqueducts here. Ah, there it is. Yeah. Aqueducts. Wow, look at this, is incredible. Yeah. Hey, this, this is the, the little cave. Look at, look at her. Can I take the monster? Wow, this is still the first one. Yeah, hi there. <laughs> look at that. This is amazing. This is a This is a, You can drink it. Really? It has... I wouldn't drink it all the time because it has a little bit more calcium than yeah. the water we drink. Mm -hmm. From the rock. Probably, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the landscape. But it's, oh. it's very unusual to have oh, this, this volume of free-flowing water on the island. From here, you can see how the water enters the aqueduct system to fill the pools. Arches in the first pool remind me of the Romans, as does the aqueduct. Restoring the walls and paintings that line the pool will be no small task and a constant fight with the plant roots. More volunteers are hard at work. On another day, Julie Morgan and I went with Gucci to see other parts of Fontaine. Julie owns the Bonaire Reporter. See the one in the office. Yeah? You have to get out here, yeah. What are you doing, baby? There is nothing like experiencing nature with food. Okay. Bucci Franz, now 90, takes us to the fake Indian inscriptions. Don't let his age fool you. He runs all the time and is in amazing shape. This enormous rock, perched on a smaller rock structure, has the inscriptions and does a balancing act. This picture of Julie with the inscriptions gives it scale. <laughs> Always remember to look up. A coconut might drop on your head. Julie and I decide to climb to the cliffs high above the pools. Backwana mold collects in this ravine and indentations in the cliff. A window in the rocks reveals the windmills on Bonaire's east coast, far below.
I hang out over the cliff to catch this breathtaking view. As Bucci looked for a piece of sugar cane for us to try, I thought of our next visit to see what work was needed. Two days ago, we cleaned it. Two days ago. Wow, look at all the... Uh, Bucci had cleaned up all the almonds two days ago. Yeah. These, these I'm just... Oh, look at you this. You know the is, the, the other day? We take the steers up to the okay. pools. It was brand just last week the child and look, I put them there. Look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can get through here now. I know you cleaned it all out. This needs to be cleared out, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's one too. Okay, all right. One thing about Bucci is he always considers all the wildlife. See, that's why I let him. Yeah. Fail them so the donkeys can come and drink. You know? Okay. Oh, this is nice. You want to hide the place? You want to mm -hmm. put uh, lights on the needle of the water, you know? Mm -hmm. Put the floor, let the people swim. I say, uh, the people, the, the pass. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the birds don't come in at night and sleep. The, the, the lights scare them, you know? Yes. We yeah. The people say they want to help me. Yeah. To fix this. The pool wall has cracked from the but large you tree roots. If you, the only way you can fix this, everyone, you can put a rope of rocks from here till there. You want to put rocks in no. the water? A row of blocks. A bl of blocks. Okay, so you want to, and then what do we do with this? And do we fill this in, or? Yeah, you know why? Because if you're going to fix it, okay, we, we, if we concrete the acid, kill all the big trees. Okay, so if we put concrete blocks in here, it'll be okay. Yeah. Here we put sand. Well, you put sand in there. Yeah. Okay. You know, because if you're going to put cement in concrete, you know. Yeah. The acid kill all. Oh, it will kill all the, yeah, the the, we roots, don't want to do that, that. That's why like this, because the roots. Yeah, they're, they're, you get, and this gives them some room to you, move. You, you, you're going to kill all the trees, the big trees. Yeah, no, we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be bad. Okay, so we're going to essentially make this pool a little bit smaller. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fill that with sand. And here, and here you can uh, put cement. Yeah? And put cement over here. If you put cement here, you kill. Okay, so we won't the do that. The first one you're going to die is this. Okay, so blocks, put sand behind it, and what do you want to put over the top? Do you want to put a concrete lid over it or no? Or yeah, just leave it? Just yeah, leave it yeah, sand so that it can expand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, do you want to take this wall down at all? No, or? no, no. It's okay? No, no. Okay, just build a concrete wall here yeah. and then fix the floor here, right? Yeah. And put the, you know? Clearly, okay. there are a lot of considerations yeah, when yeah, restoring now, Fontaine. Just here? fixing the pool requires you to consider what materials to use and to provide no, room no, for the large trees to grow. What about the floors? The yeah, floor. problem. Okay. The problem is I don't let them fit, you know, because if it, if you want to let them like the others, you know. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. You can see how he redirects the okay. water to fill the pool in a matter of hours. The water flow is incredible. Hello. All right. Well, twelve o'clock is full already. Wow. I'm going to fill it. By twelve o'clock, it's filled up. Yeah. Wow. Fill. So what do, you, what do you want to put for a cover? No uh, blocks, but not so heavy, you know. Like you want to put you want to so put blocks. Lift it up and clean it and put it back. Okay, so you will put like a block cover on that. Yeah, but not thick. But the thin blocks? Yeah, you can walk in it, you know. Yeah, they make thinner. You know, they make thinner blocks. So yeah, we can yeah. do that. About okay. this wide. Thinner blocks about that about that wide. Uh, Oh yeah, you can see the biggest issue the, to deal with termites. is termites. So you got to spray all this. Yeah. Look at that; it goes all the way. Okay. You see? Yeah. Oh my God. I know about the native. This was somebody else was here. No yeah. trees, mm -hmm. nothing left. You see? Termites. Leave them. That's yeah. why I can poison them. Yeah. Because they. Uh, the birds eat, eat them, and the birds are going to die, but I'm going to put flame in. 
Yeah, there's a spe there's a specific stuff you can do. It creates a virus and it takes the queen out. They still have them. I got. I'm gonna get some. Yeah, yeah, a person yeah. who had stayed in the small house on the property had buried shipping pallets yeah, underground that had termites. Before it's too late, we have to get after them. I learned they don't just eat the dead trees. They eat the small roots and climb to the end of the branches and work their way in. Of the trees, you know? Yeah. Professionals need to be brought in to kill the termites without injuring the birds and other wildlife. Nothing. Bucci Otherwise keeps burning me, them out in small places, but this solution only yeah. treats small yeah. areas. Fundashan Park okay. National Aruba purchased the property well. August 29, 2021. Conservation of the permanent freshwater pond's natural diversity will be the primary task, which will enable FPNA to provide sustainable nature experiences within Park National Aracuc, both for locals and international visitors to stay connected and engage with nature. The January 26, 2020 issue of Extra stated that the Bonaire government was looking to buy Fontaine at the same time Dutch monthly millionaire Mina Brenemer said that he's going to build 1,500 luxurious houses in the region of Bolivia, 10% of Bonaire that is open nature area. Although Fontaine is now part of the Aruba National Park System and not owned and managed by Bonaire, it appears they do want to conserve the area and make it available to the people of Bonaire and its tourists in some form. This is a positive step forward as the Loras settle in the trees for the evening in Fontaine. Well, we hope are. to visit Fontaine again so in a future they surface they interval. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel yeah. and helps one you to know more, when new content is released. One more week of what? Rain? Huh? No. Thank you for watching.